Hi guys, um, I am so looking forward to doing this lesson. I know that it is going to be life changing for so many of you. Very revelatory and just absolutely amazing information. Things that you probably never thought of before and just looking at it at a different light. And so um, we're going to go ahead and get started with this lesson two from the Healing for Damaged Emotions book. And it is called Grace, Guilt, and debt collecting. And so we're going to begin this chapter, um, first of all, with prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you so much for this opportunity that we have to come and learn more about you and the beautiful truths that you have for us, for our help along the way to be more of the people that you have called us to be making progress in our growth and our healing. And I just praise you and I invite your presence to be here with us. You would open our hearts and our minds and let your anointing fall. Help me to speak the words that I'm supposed to say. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. Next, we're going to open up with a parable of Jesus. Um, and this is the parable of the unforgiving servant. So this lesson is going to center around forgiveness. Um, it's very powerful and amazing because what you're going to get a lot of help with is really fully understanding what forgiveness actually is. And that would then include what forgiveness is not. And so there's a lot of misunderstanding around the concept of forgiveness. And so we're going to talk about a lot of that, unpack it all today for you. So the parable of Jesus that we're going to be reading can be found in Matthew chapter 18. We're going to be looking at verses 23 to 35. And here it goes. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven compared to a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. But for as much as he had not the money to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made with that money. The servant therefore fell down and worshipped him and said, Lord, have patience with me. And I will pay you all. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. But that same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred pence. And he laid hands on him, not in a good way, and took him by the throat, saying, Pay me what you owe. And his fellow servant fell at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay thee all. And he would not, but went and threw the man into prison till he paid everything off. So when the fellow servants saw what was done, they were very sorry, and they came to the king and told him everything that happened. Then the king afterwards called him and said to him, You wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Shouldn't you also have had compassion on your fellow servant, even as I had pity on you? And the king was angry and delivered him to the tormentors until he should pay all that was due. So likewise shall my heavenly father do to you. If you do not forgive your brother their trespasses from your heart. Okay, so now there is a whole lot of nuggets that we're going to be unpacking in this parable of the unforgiving servant. 
Jesus shows all his teachings on forgiveness wrapped up into this parable. So the servant owed the king in what would be today's equivalency of $10 million. That is an impossible amount. The exaggerated size of the debt was the whole point because we can never pay back God for the debt that he erased on our behalf when Jesus went to the cross and paid that debt for us and died in our place. If we look at the way that God forgives, that he washes it clean away as if it never happened, and that's the thing to understand, that when we come to Christ and we repent of our sins and we stop doing those things and we let Christ come in and we give him control of our life and we work with him to overcome these um, sins and habits and things that we have and we forsake that old life, it is as if it never happened. So then on Judgment Day, when God looks at you, he sees the perfection of Christ upon you. And those things in the past, as long as they've stayed in the past, will not be mentioned anymore again against you. Hallelujah. So that is God's display of forgiveness to us. Now, um, the servant begged for something in the Greek. I'm probably going to kill this word. Um, it's called macrothumison. And that is an extension of time or a delay. So we can see in this that the king's definition of forgiveness and the servant's definition of forgiveness was two completely different things. So the servant was begging for more time and he would work it off and pay everything that he owed. But the king had compassion and said, I'm just going to take it all away and you don't owe me anything. That's completely amazing. Now, the servant's co-worker owed him the equivalent in today's money of $20 that he would not forgive and he would not let go of. So to the unforgiving and therefore the unforgiven, God will be a harsh debt collector. But we don't have to wait to hell to suffer. The tormentors will be starting immediately in our life when we are overcome with guilt and shame from all the sin um, that we carry and that we have not repented of and given over to God. And that's the problem that the servant had. This is a problem a lot of us have is we don't rightly receive forgiveness as God gives it, but as we perceive it to be. And that's where the problem comes in. This parable also clearly demonstrates how we feel about people wronging us. We can see that, you know, life um, in a lot of the, the sayings and expressions that we have, it has that grace and built uh, that debt collecting system um, built into it. That's not very graceful. Um, but we'll say things like, I ought to, I owe it to her. You owe me an apology. When somebody has finished their time in jail or prison, we say they paid their debt to society. And so we see that in a lot of our expressions, that's all built in. Like we have this inner thing in us that you have to work. You have to work to pay this off. And that's not what God does. But the problem is, you know, we can see about like in the Lord's Prayer, when Jesus said for us to pray, uh, Father, uh, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Ouchie, ouchie, ouchie. That is the problem because we are asking God to forgive us the way that we forgive other people. 
So we need to be very careful with this and fully understand what forgiveness is and what forgiveness is not. That's why we have a lot of problems that we're dealing with. A lot of marriages are broken because we have our own concepts of forgiveness. Uh, my best friend Sherry uh, shared this meme and she shared it often. It was, and it's just beautiful. And it says something to the effect of like, we're, you know, all looking for unconditional love, carrying around a bag full of conditions. And that's what it is. Like we expect grace and forgiveness from other people. We don't really give it to them. And so that's the problem. That's the first problem um, that we have. Um, many years ago, there was a defensive line for the LA Rams football team. They were known as the fearsome foursome. Um, so, you know, life in general has a fearsome foursome. People today live regularly with guilt, resentment, striving, and anxiety. Statistics tell us that this is a crazy amount. 75% of the people in hospitals right now have something wrong with them that stems from an emotional problem. You would not believe the weight that stress and guilt and anxiety will put on you, the sickness that it will allow. It will eat away at you and... It's a sad, sad reality. I've seen it, uh, first of all, myself. Uh, recently, um, I had some symptoms. I was sent to the ER because it was presenting as an oncoming heart attack. And after hours of tests and different things going on, I found out that my heart, well, praise the Lord, my heart itself is fine, but uh, there's a lot of stress and things. I had to reevaluate a lot. And so a lot of this stuff, you know, you relearn, you reprioritize. There's a lot that I'm still unpacking in my trauma and things that I'm overcoming. And so we're all in this together. We're all working on this and, you know, just reevaluating things and uh, taking a good look inside of ourselves and seeing what God has to say and changing our life um, to fit that and to be better. I also heard a story, man, this was so powerful. So this was years ago and there was a man, he was a Vietnam vet and um, he had injuries. He was confined to a wheelchair and he was invited. He went one night to a tent revival that they were having and the preacher was preaching on forgiveness and the importance of forgiveness and how it can bind us and make us sick and all the problems that it can bring when we have these things and we carry these things around with us. At the end of the service, when the altar call was given, the man went up to the front in his wheelchair and just lifted his hands and just began to cry and just give his life over to God. And then also in that moment, based on the sermon that was preached, he began to not only ask for God's forgiveness of his life, but then to offer forgiveness in his heart to Jane Fonda. Uh, for those of you who may not know, she has just was just a horrible horrible person, hateful, spiteful, bitter toward those who were in Vietnam. And so he had carried so much hate and bitterness to her um, for how she was and how she acted. And in that moment, when that man forgave Jane Fonda in his heart, he got up and walked. My goodness, my goodness. So you would not imagine, you couldn't even believe all the effects in your body that stress will have. And so um, this stuff is very important to deal with, and that's why we're unpacking it. So um, there are two main causes of these emotional problems that we have. The first one is a failure to receive, understand, and then live out God's forgiveness just like in the parable that we learned the king gave the servant more than he could ever ask for or even think to ask for he completely wiped 10 million dollars away like it didn't exist that is amazing the problem was that the servant received that forgiveness as he perceived it to be which was not what the king meant and so that's why when he left the king's presence he went out to find someone who owed him money you're gonna pay me back because i gotta pay this debt back man i gotta start working and, and i this money is gonna help me you're making pennies a day you're never gonna pay back 10 million dollars 
especially not with twenty dollars. That's not getting you far. But in your mentality, that's not you're like, I gotta work, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And so, you know, a lot of times with trauma, we find out that you don't use anything logic, you don't use the logic part of your brain. But it's all involved with the limbic system that deals with emotion and trauma, uh, fight or flight response. And that's why a lot of times, too, with people who are uh, have an addiction, especially to drugs or alcohol, you can't talk with them with reason. It doesn't work because they are in full on fight or flight. It's survival. Their whole brain has changed. And so logic doesn't work. And so in a lot of these situations when we're dealing with trauma and different things, um, logic is not any part in the equation, okay? Because um, we're just perceiving it as we think it's to be. And so this man felt like um, he still owed this debt. The servant's lack of receiving, understanding, and living out true forgiveness caused the tormentors to go to work. If we were honest, we would see that many of us are like the servant. We read and hear about God's forgiveness and God's grace, but do we really understand it? We sing it in our hymns, might quote scripture about it, but do we really understand what it means? Okay, it's in our head, but not in our heart. Grace is God's unmerited favor that cannot be earned or repaid. Never, ever. With the misconception that we could actually earn grace and forgiveness, we hop on the tragic treadmill to earn it. We pray more read our Bible more, witness more, get involved in ministry and do all this stuff so that we're going to work back and we're going to pay off and we're going to be good enough for God to love. You will never earn it back. And it's not about being good enough or being any type of way of concept that you have in your heart or your mind. God loves you just the way you are right now. And then he works to conform you more into his image to help you be better than you could ever be on your own. That's how much he loves us, okay? And so he sees the worth and the value in you right now already. Okay? And um, I am praying in Jesus' name for all of us that are listening to this, that we grasp this forgiveness and this grace, that we can see ourselves the way that God sees us, and then in turn, see other people the way that God sees them. Hallelujah. So um, there was a man who fought in the Korean War. He was a very blessed man and had a really good wife. But he, once he got back, um, he constantly criticized and belittled her. Um, he did go to church, but a lot of times he just really focused on the judgment of God and the harshness of God. Well, what people didn't know is during his time that he was in the Korean War, there were a couple times that he went to prostitutes. So he came back home and had this loving wife who was good to him and loved him, but he couldn't accept it and he couldn't receive it because he was overwhelmed in such guilt and knew what he did was wrong and it ate him alive. That's why he focused on the judgment of God because that's what he believed he deserved and he couldn't receive God's forgiveness and he couldn't love his wife properly based on those things. And so he never, just like the unforgiving servant, he never fully properly received God's forgiveness. So he couldn't properly love his wife. What happens, um, so Jesus told us in scripture that we are to forgive our enemies. So what happens when you're your own enemy? That can be something that can be very difficult, but we still are required to forgive. Because if God has forgiven you, you have no right to hold it against yourself. So that's another thing right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, if you are watching this and you are having problems for giving yourself, be loosed in Jesus' name. Be loosed in Jesus' name and receive the forgiveness of God as he is sending it. The Bible says that we are justified by the blood of Jesus Christ, justified just as if I never sinned, justified. 
That's how God forgives us. Just as if it never happened. That's what the forgiveness of God is. Hallelujah. I pray that you receive that for yourself. Because our failure to properly receive God's forgiveness leads to the second emotional problem, which is obvious and not rocket science, that if you don't properly receive God's forgiveness, you cannot give it out. You can't give what you don't have. And so that's the problem that a lot of us come in contact with because we are uh, giving forgiveness based on how we view that we've been given it. And um, it's just a lot of hurt people going around hurting other people and not fully understanding this concept. Unforgiveness can destroy relationships, whether it's parents who hurt you, siblings who failed you, friends who betrayed you, people who teased you, a sweetheart who rejected you, a spouse who scarred you. They all owe you, don't they? Some of us have that feeling that somebody owes us something. So you have to think about that. Is the, the stuff that you're going through right now, maybe some health issues, maybe some mental, emotional issues, is it stuff that you're carrying around because you haven't let it go and you haven't forgiven someone? Again, don't forget, we're going to get into what forgiveness is and what it is not. That's going to be very helpful for you in your healing process. So um, when we don't receive God's forgiveness as it is, then we can't properly give it out. It becomes this messed up game of ping pong. <laughs> or then worse, even we get hurt from somebody and then take it out on innocent people because we're carrying it all around. And maybe they're not a part of our life anymore, but we're going to bleed on everybody else that we come in contact with because of that wound that never healed. So, um, one main reason why people feel hurt and let down from others is that people expect others to give them what only God can. And we look to other people and things to fill that void in us because as children of God, as God's creation, we all have that need in our heart to know him. And so when we don't have that proper relationship with God, there is an emptiness. And so people will try to use whatever they um, can to fill in that void. They will use um, drugs, alcohol, sex, power, money, position, popularity, anything that they can do so, um, in their job and performance and all these different things, anything to fill this void, but it can only be filled with God. So you can meet some wonderful people that are great spouses and friends and mentors, but they're lousy gods because only God can fill that one position in your life. And so a lot of problems do come when we look to people to complete us. This whole thing about you complete me is baloney. There's no human being that can complete you. Okay, and if you are not first completed by God, you will just forever leech off of people and look to them to heal you and help you and complete you and fulfill you. And only God can. So that's another thing to watch out for. <clears throat> um, we can see an illustration of relationships within the tick. Tick has no concern whatsoever for the dog. He's just there to take. The problem is, even worse is that some relationships are two ticks and no dog. And so they're both taken and don't care. And so it's a lot of times why it can go wrong. At the cross, Christ did more than just forgive and heal us. He removes our sins, failures, hurts, and wraps them up in his loving purpose. God never wastes a tragedy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The cross is the best example of this. How in the world could something good come from the betrayal, mockery, torture, arrest, murder, and death of the only Son of God? But in fact, not only did good come from it, the greatest good mankind could ever know came from the most evil, horrible thing ever. Because that's how God works. And so God can take our pain and our messes 
and turn it into something far more beautiful than you could ever imagine. And so um, before we end today in closing, um, I want to talk to you then and kind of explain to you a little bit more the difference between what forgiveness actually is and what it is not. So I want to talk to you about what it is not. Forgiveness is not um, sweeping it under a rug and acting like it never happened. That's not what forgiveness is. Forgiveness is not saying that what they did to you was okay. It absolutely was not. Forgiveness is not making excuses for what was done to you. Now, there can be times in a certain situation where it would be beneficial for you to kind of look at the whole situation and have some understanding to it. Okay, so let's say somebody snapped at you. Okay, well, you could say, well, you know, um, they haven't been sleeping much and their dog just died. And, you know, that would be a good reason to show grace and forgiveness and, and let it go and not worry about it and, you know, have understanding. But I'm talking about, that's not the same thing as when you're continually making excuses for someone who continues to hurt you. That is something completely different. That is not compassion. That is enabling. That is codependency. When you're constantly making excuses for someone's bad behavior, that is not right. So um, forgiveness does not always involve reconciliation. Okay? There's some situations where a person um, is never going to change. They're never going to take accountability for what they've done to you. They're never going to acknowledge any wrong on their part. They're never going to do better. They don't see anything wrong with what they did to you. So they're going to keep doing it. And in that situation, that is not smart, wise, advisable, anything for you to stay connected to that person. You need to cut them off and let them go. Sometimes that person is family. Sometimes it's work. Sometimes it's your best friend. Sometimes it's your spouse. Goodbye. Goodbye. You have to choose you. Okay? So if you have a spouse that's continually having an affair, um, things like that, and they don't, they're not concerned about you or the hurt that it's causing you, goodbye. Goodbye. You know, different things. A family, just because someone's family, just because someone's a best friend, just because someone's a family friend, just because you've known someone so long, that doesn't give them some free pass to continue hurting you. No. No. You have to choose you. Okay? Um, and so um, forgiveness is, you know, does not, has actually nothing to do with another person. Forgiveness is a gift that you give to yourself. Forgiveness is getting to that point where you say, do you want to know what? What they did to me was awful and it was painful. And be honest about the effects that it had on you because you have a voice and you matter and you count. So you can be honest. You can verbalize it. You can say whatever it did to you. Go ahead. But then forgiveness is saying, what they did was wrong, but my peace is more important and I'm not going to continue caring. I'm going to learn my lesson from this and I'm going to move on. This is only one part of my story. I got a whole book and I can't move on to another chapter if I'm still stuck here. And this person isn't worth my time. This person isn't worth my peace or my salvation or my sanity or my health or anything else. So I am to protect myself to choose myself, to put myself first, I'm going to say bye. And this is going to end here. And I'm going to move on. And it will probably be painful. A lot of times when you have to cut people off, it's painful. But there's times that you do have to cut people off. Maybe the person that hurt you has passed away or you have no contact with them anymore. You can write them a letter, put it at their grave or write a letter and burn it or throw it away. Whatever, cut it up, whatever. There's so many different um, ways that you can get past it. You don't have to talk to the person. Sometimes talking to the person isn't going to solve anything because they're just going to um, use you, manipulate you, uh, mock you. All these, they're not mature enough, mentally capable enough to reconcile and have a proper relationship. So you can't go to them. It's better for you that you don't go to them. That's another reason. I want to show you an example of this. 
um, in closing here in scripture, we have a phenomenal example. Um, in the Old Testament, um, we know that um, there was uh, King Saul. And he got to a point where he was in full-on rebellion against God, doing toxic things constantly all the time, trying to kill people and kill his own kid and all this stuff. He was just gone in the mind. And Samuel, the prophet, was the one who anointed him and loved him and worked with him. And this tore him up. It broke his heart. Constantly going through this, constantly doing, you know, crying over this. Um, we're going to read about this. 1 Samuel chapter 15. This is yet again another time that Saul disobeyed God and Samuel just had to have enough. At the end of chapter 15, 1 Samuel 15 verse 34 says, Then Samuel went up to Ramah. That's where he lived. Samuel went to Ramah, his house. Saul went up to his house in Gibeah, and Samuel came no more to see Saul till the day he died. Nevertheless, Samuel mourned for Saul. And the Lord regretted that he had ever made Saul king of Israel. Let's go on to the next chapter, the first verse at least to read this. Chapter 16, verse 1. The Lord said to Samuel, how long are you going to mourn for Saul? How long are you going to sit here and cry? Seeing that I have rejected him from being king over Israel, Fill up your horn with oil and go. I'm going to send you to Bethlehem, to Jesse's house, because I have chosen a son, a king among his sons. So, you know, there's that time where, where it will hurt. But sometimes you have to cut people off for your own safety. And it's going to be painful for a while. But then you have to move on to better and brighter things in your future. So take the time to mourn. There's nothing wrong with crying. There's nothing wrong with hurting. But don't keep running back to the same people who are just going to keep hurting you over and over and over again. Because at some point, then you have to take a look at yourself. And you have to not blame them anymore. Because they're just being themselves. But why are you continuing to allow this to go on? So sometimes forgiveness involves cutting them off and then moving on. And just making sure that these things aren't eating away at you. And just ruining your life. Because you're beautiful. And you're amazing. And you're awesome. And God has wonderful, fantastic plans for your life. You have a wonderful future. There's no reason whatsoever why you can't attain to the goals that you have, that you're striving for. They are there for you to get. Hallelujah. And so you just don't want anything holding you back. And so now there's a difference between don't be become there's a there's a type of, and I've seen this too where people are bitter and they say they've gotten over it and they say they've forgiven someone and they absolutely have not and their lives are still a mess and still a ruin so remember in that parable that we read in Matthew Jesus said to forgive your brother from your heart okay so it's got to be serious not just a verbiage you know oh yeah I forgave him but did you really from your heart? And so I hope uh, this has benefited you guys. And I just love it. It's helped me. It helps me all the time I do it. So you guys have a great night. God bless you and walk in the forgiveness Jesus has given to you. He has given it to you freely. So take it in Jesus name. Have a great night, guys. Bye.